it the scenario was like this the mobile applications were the mobiles that were developed the mobiles that were being manufactured were not powerful enough and so the problem was the, the, there were issues with performance so when you load the native when you load the hybrid app when you load the website responsive website on a mobile application using the native wrapper the problem is the time taken to load the wrapper the time taken to execute javascript there were not enough resources there were not enough infrastructure on the mobile devices so that they can run these javascript codes these uh, anchor, these javascript frameworks so generally when you write a website you do it with, uh, in frameworks like angular like angular js like jquery you do it in javascript frameworks so the problem is the when you have when you host it on a mobile device the mobile device has to process the codes so there were not enough resources the rams the ram sizes were limited for mobile applications back in that time so uh, mark zuckerberg when they started facebook website the website they simultaneously launched an application also in 2005 in the initial years so they built it the same way the website they made it they made it responsive so that it looks good on the small screen devices and then they used the native uh, the native wrapper to run it on mobile devices because it was slow uh, they released a statement saying that it was their biggest mistake developing start to start developing the mobile applications using the native wrapper but now it is the scenario has completely changed so when you look at mobile devices back in 2007 when the first iphone was launched it had a 400 megahertz processor with a 128 mb ram so it has developed a lot and now the scenario is like you have a 2.34 gigahertz processor and a 2 gb ram 7 plus you have 3 gb ram also so the problem is so the advantage here is you you can very efficiently run the codes now there are frameworks having uh, that have come up so the problem initially was when you use uh, other javascript frameworks that were existent at that time all of them used dom tree manipulation so what it means is when you have code written in javascript it is uh, when you have uh, when you give an animation to say some particular link may or may be some particular div so what it does is to select that div it used to travel down the dom tree inside the nested divs inside the nested uh, classes and all and then it is used to go to that particular uh, class that you have mentioned there and then it used to perform certain performed actions of so it was using the dom tree traversal to do the to do one particular uh, function now you have advanced javascript frameworks come up you have backbone js you have angular js you have ember js so these javascript frameworks uh, use declarative type of uh, program so what they do is they don't traverse down the dom tree but they identified using uh, it, uh, some advanced concepts like directives you have uh, directives you have services you have factories so using those uh, features they access the elements and then implement a functionality on them so you have two advantages first the mobile applications have developed so the mobile devices have developed a lot their uh, infrastructure has increased a lot their uh, processing capacity has increased a lot and then the javascript frameworks that we used to develop your website they they were also uh, they are also being developed in such a way that it is very fast to compile them so from both sides there is an advancement and now we are at a stage where there is a, there, there is a very close difference in the performance of hybrid app and then uh, native and then web standards have also improved so uh, when you have android os now the where uh, the websites uh, the, the applications that used to render the websites are now chromium based so most of the browsers that you have on android are on chrome javascript framework so you have a separate javascript framework that uh, chrome runs google chrome runs so every uh, so every browser in android now is on chrome uh, chrome platform only. so there's a website called canius.com so that will show you what properties you can use on what browsers So as you can see here, uh, for example, you have query selector all for accessing the DOM elements using CSS selectors. So you have this particular functionality. So in this website called Canaiuse.com, what it does is it gives you several platforms like Internet Explorer, Firefox, Chrome, Safari, and all. And then you can see, and then you can it, it tells you on what version of those applications you can run this particular feature. and then the second feature is a flexible layout box layout so that's the css uh, property css styling property 
So it is a method for positioning elements in horizontal or vertical stacks. So this particular feature is now accessible on almost all the browsers in a very efficient manner. So when browsers can, uh, when almost all the browsers can process all the almost all the CSS properties, when they have such kind of an advancement, then you can easily run your uh, websites on a mobile platform. So Android OS is now Chromium based. So you have the so when you have Chrome, when you can if you can see here, Chrome has uh, this this particular uh, functionalities implemented on all its, on, on all of its versions. So the advantage is if you have a little older version of your Android OS also, you have, you can have all those properties uh, running in your application. So uh, the the good thing is when you you can write any kind of you you need not worry about the uh, you know, so, see for example when you have a mobile website developer uh, you have uh, some properties CSS properties that you need to specify separately for running on Mozilla for running on Internet Explorer for running on Opera for running on Safari so you have to separately mention those properties some properties do not work on specific browsers now you don't have that problem the gap. The gap is closing up, and then you have uh, more freedom now. You can write the same property that can run on almost all the browsers. Yeah. So when you come to uh, and then uh, as we as we see here, iOS users are also keeping their devices uploading. So uh, one so here also there is a development on both sides. The users of the mobile applications are keeping their devices uploading. So the advantage is you have the latest version of these browsers installed on the device. And then you have uh, the properties, the CSS properties, the, C the JavaScript uh, functions running on almost all the browsers. So when you have that kind of development, then, it is, then the websites can function more uh, properly, can function more efficiently on the mobile devices. So this particular graph shows you how, uh, how uh, properly, uh, the I mean, how we uh, so very, very fast uh, installment of updates. So what it means is whenever an uh, an operating system update comes in. So for example, if you take the iOS eight operating system update, so it was launched on uh, September seventeen. So they started rolling out uh, the update on the devices from September two thousand fourteen, and then within around one year of that. It came to almost 90 percent of the devices. Similar is the case with Android also. So when you have the latest version that is Lollipop, uh, it was launched on October. It was launched during October, and then within a few months, it came on to almost 50 percent of the devices. So because you have frequent updates in Android coming up, so the number of users having the latest devices is less. So the number of OS updates also less. But then this is pretty good. I mean. The people are changing to the environment, are adapting to the environment and updating their operating systems to the latest version. So you have the latest version of the uh, Chrome drivers in Android installed. You have the latest version of browser kits in Safari installed on iOS. So you have better processing of websites in mobile applications. So the advantage is uh, the advantage of native SDK is you have UIs, APIs, use navigation and stack, etc. For example, when you start an Android application, you when you are creating a new application, you have an option of selecting predefined, custom defined uh, layouts. So, like you have a sign up page default ready for you, or you have a slide a sliding activity ready for you whenever you start an application. So you have those features, and it comes to native SDKs. That is why it is pretty good to develop an application in the native SDKs. The only problem is that when you have multiple platforms. There, there comes an issue. So, a native SDK has all these properties like you have uh, custom definitions for lists, buttons, tabs, navigation, scrolling, etc. All you have in a uh, all you have in a hybrid app is a web view. So, that is the difference when it comes. So, everything you write in web view, it gets rendered on the native app the same way. When it comes to uh, hybrid, when it comes to native apps, then you have multiple items. Being rendered differently on the device. Like you have an Android operating system and you have an Android application. So in your Android application, you've included list. So there's a specification for the functioning of list on that operating system in a particular manner. So that is how it runs. But here, when it comes to Godot or PhoneGap applications, you have a native app in which you have a web view, 
and then all these all these properties like list buttons are by default there and they are rendered and delivered the same so the solution uh, like i said there is a very less gap between hybrid applications and native applications so the so there are a lot of frameworks fulfilling this gap which you which fulfill this gap in the most efficient way so one such framework is ionic so ionic has a pretty good advantage over the other frameworks the other frameworks you have is sincha uh, you have uh, jquery mobile so you have all these frameworks uh, ionic is also a similar kind of framework that lets you run mobile website on uh, that that lets you run website on mobile applications so the reason ionic is uh, popular when compared to the all to all other frameworks uh, is that they, it has a very good uh, feature base it has a very good support it has a very good community that we are going to see now <laughs> so the first advantage of ionic is that you have you you do everything in web technologies that you already know so uh, when you have a javascript developer he already knows html file css3 and javascript so he doesn't have to do anything out of the box to learn this technology to learn to develop a mobile application using ai or even if someone doesn't know these things you can get started with these in very less time and now you have lot of resources for learning this so you can uh, start off any time from within two weeks to around a month that will be more than enough for anyone to start start off with these technologies like html css and javascript so the learning curve is very uh, low so you can get started with these applications within no time and then once you uh, get hold of these when you get hold of the ideology and concepts behind javascript and css and html you can very well get started with any framework and angular js also yeah and then one more advantage is it is super powered by angular so angular has very good features angular has very good properties it has very good uh, is a controlling data, data flow controlling methods that help you develop applications within no time with a lot of ease so what features angular has that helps it uh, be this successful we are going to see in the coming slides so to put it in a nutshell the main advantages of angular you have the main features you have is it extends the html vocabulary so it completely takes over html and then you can write programs in html just like you write a c c program so you can write on html you do not have this condition you don't have loops so what angular does is it completely takes over html and then you can implement loops you can implement conditionals you can you can use expressions inside html so that is the reason uh, angular is so successful and then it has uh, been proven uh, very beneficial for large scale app application development so the advantage that you have with uh, angular js is it is a web framework and then it has uh, a very modular design so what i mean by modular is uh, you have suppose you have to implement a particular functionality so you break it up into abstraction levels you break it down you break it down into the uh, smallest part possible and then you implement the smallest part first and then you develop on those uh, parts to build a complete application so the advantage you have with this is you have uh, very uh, you have reusable code so uh, once you have to implement a functionality you write a very generic code using angular js uh, features and then you can use the same code again and again so it, it follows a diy properties diy stands for don't repeat yourself so what this does is you have a very generic code written and then you, you can reuse it again and again for implementing similar kind of features and then you have ui components using directives and services uh, one important app, uh, application of angular js are single page applications so we will see advantages of single page applications in the coming slide so uh, what you can know as of now is it uses things called directives and services that help you implement sim sim uh, single page applications very easy which uh, otherwise if you do not use angular then you would have to configure a lot of things do a lot of uh, uh, data flow routing when you use other frameworks so angular js so we will start with uh, then when it comes to uh, styling ionic uses sass so sass is a css uh, predecessor so the advantage that you have with uh, sass is it is like a programming language 
first I think for designers. So the advantage you have with SASS is in CSS you don't have variables, you don't have uh, uh, you you cannot store a particular property. But when it comes to SASS, you don't uh, it follows a variable based uh, default settings approach. So when you have a for for instance suppose you have a color and then uh, that that particular color suppose you have it as a hash f8 3 something so when you don't remember code for that you can give it your custom own color you can give your name as a color for it so you can store that particular uh, color code as a variable in SAS. so and then you can reuse the variable again and again in the different coming css uh, in the coming SAS, uh, properties and then you can quickly give your app its own look and feel so the advantage you have with SASS is like in uh, it has nesting for it in SAS nesting is possible uh, for instance you have a div and inside that div you have another div nested and then along with the inner div you have three or four other uh, elements like a h1 class or p class and so on so what you do in SASS is in CSS what you have to do is you have to specify the outer div class and for each of them you have to specify like suppose the outer div class is home so you have to specify dot home and then the inner div write its properties and then again you have to give a, a styling to the p element so you will again write dot home p and its style now what you have to do in SASS is you have nesting possible so you just write the outer class and then just like python code you have a, you have an indentation given so uh, what it does is when you have the outer class defined as dot home up above and then with an indentation whenever you, you can write all the properties like for p you define a p here with, an, with a tab space and then you write down its properties you write a div here and then you write down its properties so that is the advantage when you have with SASS it completely overrides the CSS code and then you have very good and very efficient compilers that compile the SASS code to CSS code during the runtime so when you have SASS used the styling becomes very easy and this SASS is used in the IE frame. So how it all wraps up together is you have your mobile application and then you have your, you have a, a native app field on it. So how that the native app is implemented is you have a web view that Cordova provides and on that you have your Angular code written that is embedded inside IE frame. You write your application on this on this interface. So you have your application code which runs on IE. Ionic in turn compiles the whole code into Angular JS code. This Angular JS code is compiled into native JavaScript code, and then this native JavaScript code runs on the mobile application as a web code. So let us move on to Angular JS. So Angu uh, what does Angular JS is? It is a structural web framework. So the keywords are structural and framework. So what structural means is you uh, it completely overrides the HTML. Uh, property in completely overrides the HTML code. So you have a structure in which the code is written, and then in that in the same HTML structural format, you have the Angular code also written. You have classes implemented, you have uh, you have groups implemented in a very structural format. So that that is the meaning of a structural framework. And then uh, it, it is a, and then what framework means is the main advantage that you have with framework is uh, when you don't suppose you don't use a framework. What you do is you write an application and then you write uh, what piece of code to be called what type. So, for example, you have a JavaScript code written. So, everything is, is asynchronous. It, run, it keeps running all the time in the browser. And then you do, you you need you need to specify what piece of code needs to be called for what functionality at what time. When it comes to frameworks, the advantage that you have is it is like a skeleton in which you have empty parts. And then uh, the policy that frameworks follow is you don't call the functions, the functions call your code whenever required. So you have a code written that fills in the gaps in the framework and then when you run the framework, the framework is predefined so that it runs in a specific format. So when it runs, when you have your code filled in, when a particular functionality is encountered, it calls in your code, then your code gets executed. So that is the advantage that you have with frameworks. And then it was designed by uh, Misko Heberi and then it was first released in June 2012, the Angular version 1 was released. Then the Angular version 2 was also released in around 2014-15 and then there was a 3 to be released uh, slightly a month back 
But then that was cancelled and then you have a version 4 being released very soon. Probably next month or the month after that you have the version 4 released. So the differences in these versions, version 1 followed a, a kind of logic, a different kind of logic when compared to version 2. Version 2 was implemented completely in TypeScript. So TypeScript, TypeScript is a superset of a, a JavaScript. So you have everything implemented in an object oriented design format. And then uh, you have you have a more, more modular approach in the version 2. Whereas in version 1, you uh, it is more of like a normal JavaScript code. Version 2 is completely implemented in uh, TypeScript. And then uh, from version 2 to version 4, there's no there's not much difference uh, to be expected in the format of the code that you have to write. The only thing is that there are more features implemented in the 4 version and compared to the 2 version. So when migrating from version 1 to version 2, you have rules written. So you have to follow a set of rules that you, uh, when you need to migrate everything from 1 to 2. But the reverse way is not possible. When you have a 2 version, you cannot migrate it back to the version 1. And then it is one of the most popular front-end JS frameworks. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, it has a unique way of routing, it has a unique way of data flow control. Uh, way of uh, defining directives, it has features like factories and services that lets you write applications in a very modular manner that gives you complete application, uh, that gives you complete control over the application. So, there are a few properties of Angular JS because of which it is famous. So, uh, well, so the reason why it is famous is you have a very large community of Angular JS. So, this community of Angular JS includes uh, so right now it is handled by Google. When it was first released by Misko uh, Hebri, the version 1 had very limited features, but then there was a lot of scope in it. So the project was taken up by Google. It is now completely open source and maintained by Google. So the further versions of the app, the framework will also be released by Google itself. Uh, it is available as an open source project. So you have other developers also working on it. So you have few features of AngularJS that are not built into the Angular core framework. You have uh, you have a few very good features that have been developed externally by developers that Google has incorporated into the AngularJS framework. So you have a few uh, you have a few features that run on few uh, like you have gems in Ruby. So there's something like that in AngularJS also. You have packages that are externally there. You need to install it using uh, so uh, Angular JS and could be installed using package managers like npm and Bower. So npm and Bower uh, have have included these npm and Bower have also included these uh, external uh, packages that have been uh, developed by the developers and have incorporated them into the main Angular JS framework. And then it uses declarative coding style. So what this style is uh, is we'll see in the coming slides. And then it has directives. Uh, because of directives, uh, you have your application development becomes easy. You can develop large scale applications very easy. And then uh, you have fast development times. Uh, so uh, the same logic applies because you have a modular approach. We can develop applications very fast. And then the best thing about AngularJS is it, it, is it follows MVC framework. So MVC stands for Model View Controller Framework. So what it is and how it works, we're going to see uh, in the coming slides. And then uh, it has a two-way binding approach. So what does two-way binding approach is? You have uh, a logic written. You have a view that is rendering the logic. So two, what two-way binding means is when you have an input coming from the view. So that change is directly reflected in the logic. And then when you have a change in the logic, you have you have it directly reflected in the view. So we we are going to all, see all these things in detail. So coming to the Angular vocabulary. So these are some common terms that we are going to see that AngularJS supports. So there are two-way data binding, scopes, directives, templates, routing, modules, controllers, filters, factory services and parameters. So first quickly uh, we will run through the directives and then what, what kind of features that AngularJS has. So first directive is the NGR directive. So that is the uh, directive that you have to write on top of the DOM tree. So NGR directive is used to specify the root of, root of the application. It lets the browser know that uh, uh, so when you have a HTML div or a HTML tag 
with uh, with the ng app directive the browser knows that, knows that your application is an angular js application and then the next is the ng init directive so the ng init directive is used to evaluate an expression or initialize a javascript query so uh, you can clearly see here like i mentioned that uh, java uh, angular js completely overtakes html so you, as you can see here uh, normally in uh, html you don't have variables you don't have initialization of variables you don't have logic that can be written in html but here with the help of angular js you can see that uh, you have a with the help of ng init directive you have a variable called index that is initialized with a value 1 and then you have a div class in which you have an ng init directive declared in which you can have this word this particular variable called dish which is an object uh, which is an object and it has attributes like name and other attributes and then you can define those attributes so the, you can assign those attributes you can assign values to those attributes inside the ng init directive and then you have expressions also evaluated in the html code itself so when you specify your application as an ng uh, as an angular application then you have these uh, expressions like you have two parentheses in which you can write the expression and then that will get evaluated during the runtime so suppose you had written instead of dash dot name suppose you write 5 plus 6 inside uh, angular inside parentheses and then that will be executed and displayed as 11 so when you have anything enclosed in parentheses that gets executed as a uh, javascript code directly so that is executed as an expression and then the next angular directive is ng model directive so what it does is it binds the input value to a variable within the scope so this is where the two-way binding comes in so suppose you have an ng app declared and then you have an input box so what happens here is you have you declare the input box as an ng model so a control so a variable so a We'll see later that there's a there's a, some there's something called services. So you have a service within AngularJS initiated that will uh, that will bind your input box value to a to a value called your name. Name is you can directly print it using the ex expression evaluation. So uh, just to see a small demo of it. <coughs> we have it here so when you see the code here you initialize the uh, input value so you initialize your div as an uh, ng app and then you have input type equal to text in the ng model equal to name so you give a model called name to your input box and then below when you display something you can buy you can do ng bind so what ng bind stands for is you have a model declared ng bind and a variable you bind the uh, model and you bind the view so the p tag that is here could be seen as a view and then uh, you can see this ng model as a model so here the two way binding comes in so suppose you have a change in the uh, a change in the view so suppose you type something so it automatically will get selected so this is what is meant by two way binding any change in the view gets reflected in the model any change in the model gets reflected back in the view so what happens in the background in this process is when you have an ng model with the name created you have variables created in the background which stores these values so you have a model view interaction there so a change in the view that is when you type in something here there is a change in the view that gets reflected in the model and then the same model you again specified in the view using the ng byte again here is a model to view connection that is there and then because there is a change in that model it gets reflected back in the Then we have the ngdp directive. You can implement loop conditionals using the ngdp directive in the HTML code. So, for example, you have uh, an unordered an list. So, in an unordered list, normally what you do in HTML is uh, suppose you have uh, suppose you want to display a list of all the countries in the world. So, there are around more than 190 countries. So what you do in HTML normally is if you have to write in a obtain HTML code, you write a UL class and then you have you write a UL tag and then inside each UL tag you mention the new fields condition. So what you have so what you can do with the Angular NGDP directive is uh, you can create a JavaScript object array 
that has all the countries listed inside an area. And then when you use it as a ng repeat directive, when you use it as a loop, it itself iterates over all the elements in the area and then displays it, populates the unordered list. So for example, here you have a UL class UL with a class defined, and then inside inside an LI, you write an ng repeat. So what this uh, ng repeat does is Suppose you have an object called, you have a JavaScript uh, object array called dishes. So inside dishes, you have a number of uh, dishes written. So what happens here is, you write something, a variable in dishes. So dish is a variable here, dishes is an array. So dish and dishes, what it does is, when you write it inside ng repeat, it iterates each time over all the JavaScript objects. Over all, the Java, over all the JavaScript array elements. And then, when you write it in an ng repeat, the class, the tag in which it is applied, that tag is repeated for, for a number of times till the JavaScript array gets completed. So, you displace all the dishes in the, in the array in a list. And then, you come to Angular modules and controllers. So, first thing is, uh, you have an ng module repeat. So when you have an ng app equal to something, you specify that it is an Angular application. And then when you have to implement the logic in it, you have to write it inside a module. So uh, just like in normal JavaScript or jQuery, you have something written inside script tags. The same way you write JavaScript code also inside script tags. And then you define a module right? so in this way. So you write a variable, name, space variable name equal to angular.module and then you write this particular application. So uh, let me tell you what confusion happens. So for learning AngularJS or uh, uh, full stack development, you have a very popular course on Coursera uh, that helps you learn these things in a very quick time. So there's a standard uh, application that needs to be developed. Uh, that, that is generally followed for uh, developing because it follows a bottom-up approach. So it will teach you the basics first and then it goes on to building a complex application. That application is named as Confusion App. So they have a complete tutorial set and they also have a server run. So uh, suppose you have an application, uh, you have an end application, you have a server run. So the server acts more or less like a REST API that provides information to the end application. So they have a custom built uh, server that can run and they also, and then they teach you how to build an application. So our presentation will more or less be on the lines as that of confusion app that is being provided by Coursera. So, so in this presentation, we'll slowly uh, learn things and then we'll uh, and then we'll see the implementation of this part of this application completely. So our app that is defined is called as confusion app. We also have a server. Uh, we'll see about it uh, in the coming slides. So, and then I mentioned about, so that this, so this is how you define an uh, Angular module. And inside module, you have controllers. So, uh, the controllers that are there in Angular JS, they follow the MVC approach. So, you have the model, you have the view, you have the controller. So, the advantage you have with this is, it, uh, you have something called separation of concerns. So, what it does is, suppose you have a business logic, and you have something that needs to be rendered. So you have a logic separate, completely isolated from the view. Whatever you do, whatever you do on the logic side, is it is not shown to the user. User is is a is an implementation of this. I mean, the outcome of the business logic is shown to the user. So uh, this MVC framework particularly takes care of that in Angular. So uh, so how model works is so for first component in the MVC framework is the model. So what model does is manages the behavior and data of the application domain and responds to requests for information about its state. So suppose uh, you have maybe say a database and then you have an end application data, you have a view that is shown to the user. So suppose uh, what is shown to the user is this personal information. So suppose the user wants to, uh, uh, wants to change this personal information. So he edits a feed and then clicks on update button at the bottom. So what happens here is, you have a view there and you have a model here. So the, the, the change that is taking place in that particular place needs to be reflected in the model. So this model takes care of all the data that is running behind the application. So model uh, changes, manages the behavior and data of the application. That, what it means is, 
you have a model in which you have the, all the information stored. So uh, along with model, you have a controller. So uh, in a in a in an overview, if you see, you have a controller view and a model. So uh, uh, any change in the view will trigger the controller, which will instruct the model to uh, uh, which instructs the model to execute that particular functionality. So uh, uh, coming to the view, a view renders a model in a form suitable for interaction, typically a uh, user interface element. So like I said, you have a user updating his personal information in the view. So uh, that that so the controller defines what will happen when he clicks on update. So when you, a user clicks on update, in the controller you define that whenever he clicks on update, you get the values from each of the input elements and then then you pass it on to the model. So more, controller is more like an interaction, is like an interface between the model and the view. What, what needs to be done when you click on something is defined in the controller. And what needs to be saved, the information that you get to, to the view, from the view to the controller, is passed on to the model so that the model can save the information or update itself based on the view. And then uh, one more case that arises is, suppose you have a page loading. So suppose uh, you have something displaying or being displayed on a page. And then you redirect your application to some other page. So the information that needs to be rendered on the page is changing. Uh, so, so like, for example, you have a Facebook website. So uh, you have a particular, you have your home feed. So for that particular home feed, some data needs to be rendered. So that the data, rend so the data that needs to be rendered is uh, requested by the controller to the model. The model provides the data. The controller does operations on that data, does processing on the data and then provides it to the view. The view displays the data. Suppose you click on some uh, person's profile on the page that you have, on the default page that you have on Facebook. So the, that particular person's information needs to be fetched from the database again. So when a change needs to be done, when a new data needs to be fetched in, again, based on your interaction, the view records the interaction and, and tells the controller that the user has requested for this. Then the controller goes to the model, and then tells the model what data needs to be fetched back. So the model responds appropriately, gives the data back to the controller, and then the controller processes that information, uh, makes cards out of it, makes the like Facebook displays, photographs, displays, videos, cards. So it processes that information into those cards and then gives it to the view, which will give you which will give the user the look. So this is how the model view controller works. So the controller, what it does is receives the user input and initiates a response by making the calls of the model. And then it instructs the model and viewport to perform actions based on that. And then uh, how do you define a controller is? Uh, a controller is a JavaScript object containing attributes, properties, and functions. So when you have data coming into the model or you have uh, some change that needs to take effect from the view to the controller, the controller, in order to process the information, in order to implement the logic, the controller needs to have uh, attributes, properties, and functions with the help of which you can implement your logic. So it exposes the variables in functionality to express to expressions and directives. So it takes in the data from the model, and then using functions and variables, it tells it tells the view what to display what when the user clicks something. So uh, maybe you have uh, a hide button and a show button. So when you click on hide button, some some information is hidden, and when you and when you click back on show, that input is, that information is shown. So the view, uh, so the controller controls all these things. So it tells the view that so the view tells the controller whenever a user clicks on show. So uh, when a show is clicked, that information is passed on to the controller. Controller implements some logic inside some functions, and then makes that variable exposed to the view. And then it tells the view that this, this is the information that needs to be displayed. So this is how a controller is defined. So you can define a controller inside any of the classes. Like inside a div, you can define a controller. Inside a body tag, you can define a controller. So whatever, so when a tag closes, suppose you open a div tag, and then you specify an empty controller. So wherever the div tag ends, there the scope of the controller ends. So like you have here, you have a div tag open here, and then you have the same div tag closed here. So what happens here is, uh, inside the, within the uh, within the DOM tree that is there, inside the div, this ng controller is active. And then the way you do this is, inside the, uh, on the logic end, on the, inside the JavaScript code that you write, you define your Angular module, 
and uh, for, uh, so when you, whenever you have to implement some logic, you have to defer, uh, initiate a module, and then to that module you have uh, you have a controller, you have uh, several other functionalities that need to be implemented. So one such functionality is a controller. So you can you associate that controller to that module. So the way you associate this, you have a you have a variable here declared called app. And then that app is initialized to a that that is initialized with a module, and then inside that module you have a controller uh, setup. So that controller takes care of the logic the logic part. So here you have the controller defined as menu menu controller, and then that menu controller you bring it in the ng controller on the HTML side, and then uh, the reason you write it as as menu CTRL is suppose you have the controller name very news. Uh, substitutes for that, like uh, uh, you can have short forms or abbreviations. So that, because the reason uh, this is done is, suppose you have many controller as it is, you can have uh, you can have that as it is taken. But then to that controller, you have several objects attached, or you have because the controller is made up of attributes functions, you have several functions and attributes attached. So whenever you want you want to use that in a view, you have to write the whole name, well, menu controller, menu controller every time. So instead of that, you just write menu uh, when you use a substitute like as menu CTR. You just need to use the menu CTR, and then all the objects of menu controller uh, behave the same way as objects of menu CTR. And then comes Angular filters. So uh, Angular filters, how they are uh, defined is you have a uh, Angular, you have a controller object. You have any object for that matter. You have a uh, and then you add a pipe. Uh, pipe symbol, and then you add the particular filter. So Angular provides uh, a few filters by default. You can also write your own filters. What they need to do. So uh, how this works is, it formats the value of an expression for display to the end user. So when you have this particular uh, object called dish dot price, so there's a value that is associated with dish dot price. So there's a price available. So that price is an integer. Suppose say ten, ten dollars maybe. So, so, so what you get in from the model, what you store in the database is you don't store the ten space that dollar symbol. There. You just store it as ten, and then when you display it, probably you display it as uh, uh, double quotes dollar. So for to, in order to display the dollar, you put a dollar there, and then you give a space, and then you ask to print the value of that. So instead of that, you have Angular filters built in. So uh, this is just for a simple uh, functionality. Suppose you have a uh, you have a big functionality to be implemented. You have a complex functionality to be implemented. The filters come in as very handy. So so the example here is dish dot price. So what you get from the database is the value ten. So that value because it is written inside an expression, the value ten is displayed. And then because it is piped with a currency filter, currency is a filter that is provided by Angular. So you can uh, uh, modify the currency format also. So inside uh, you have uh, settings, uh, settings defined. You have settings defined in the Angular JS uh, uh, framework. So in that framework, you can specify what current, what type of currency to be uh, displayed. So when you have the settings uh, set as, you have that particular setting set as uh, maybe USA. So the stack, so it automatically detects that it is the country is USA. And what needs to be displayed is in dollars. So it displays a dollar ten. So what is displayed here is. Uh, inside the span class batch you have dollar 10 display and then it can be used in view templates controllers or services so this filter that is there uh, you can use it to filter your views suppose uh, so suppose you have you, you take the same example you want to display a list of countries in the world and maybe you want to and then you have a filter implemented so uh, whenever because of two way binding suppose you enter a country you have an input box that will act as a filter so, so you can write a you can implement a logic wherein you can write a continent name, and the list will be uh, will be updated based on two-way binding, and it will display only those countries that are that belong to that particular continent. So that is how filters work. We'll see that in a code example later. And now uh, we have a demo. So whatever we learned, we've learned till now, we'll see a code uh, implementation of it, and then we'll see how it works. So uh, the first so the first demo which will you the implementation of models, views and controllers. Yeah. So this is the basic functionality of the confusion application. 
the hotel it is a it is basically a hotel uh, menu service application so it will display various dishes in the available in that hotel and then each uh, each dish or each uh, item in that uh, in the menu has a few has a few attributes like it has a title and then it has a tag which is displayed in there and then it has a price attached to it and then it has a description of it and then we, uh, you have four dishes for uh, for illustration purposes suppose you take four dishes so uh, you can have these dishes uh, classified based on the type of dish there so inside appetizers you have these two dishes and then in the main course suppose you have this dish and then inside desserts you have this dish so this is basically a filter implemented so what it does is whenever you click on something it formats the list based on the uh, based on the filter and then it displays the, only those objects that satisfy that filter property so this is how it works so when you go to the code implementation of it so so whenever you have an angular js application you have all these folders set up you have a you have angular folder you have an angular folder in which you define the application name for confusion and then it has uh, it has folders like app and then it has a few and it has one more folder called bar components so bar so bar angular uses bar uh, package manager so what it does is you have a settings file called as uh, called as bar.js so what it does is you have you have these settings written there you have the you, you tell the application what uh, resources you are going to use like uh, for example you use bootstrap for styling you tell it that you yeah, that you are going to use font awesome font library for uh, rendering fonts you tell it that you use angular js for uh, for as a, as a, for implementing the logic for your application you tell it that you implement the router using the angular ui router package so you define these things and then you define the version of it that needs to be used and then based on that uh, you run a command you you go you go to the directory where you have the bar.json file defined and then you run a command called bar install so it goes to the package it goes to the bar.json file and then it uh, comes across all the packages that need to be installed and then it searches online for those particular packages and then sets, sets it up automatically in your bar components folder so you just need in and in your uh, application is yes. so is this visible yeah so in this so you have a folder called bar components created in which you just need to give links to your uh, files so for the for css files you have the bootstrap min automatically downloaded and put up sorry is it broken so so you have a folder called bar components created in which you have all these files automatically downloaded based on the version that you provide so you just need to give links to those files inside your html page and then scrolling down you come to the body tag in which you define your application using the ng app directory so you define your application name as a confusion app based on this based on this name you initiate a module also and then what uh, and then you have all these bootstrap classes implemented so right now you want to go into the bootstrap classes and just see the logic how it works and then you have this ul class nav tabs uh, element there so inside it you have a list of elements in which each element has an ng class called menu menu control dot deselected so above it you first uh, you first have the div in which you define the ng controller so you have a controller defined so when you so when you scroll down you have you have the statement called where application app equal to angular dot module confusion app so you give a you give a name there that called confusion app on the top and then that particular name is associated with the angular module here so a module so an angular module so the application knows that whenever you give the name confusion app on the top it knows that it needs to refer to this module and it and it knows that an angular module is created and then it needs to render all these objects so uh, yeah so here when you have this ng app defined within the body scope wherever the body scope is there 
you have uh, this ng app also defined. So whatever variables you have inside the model created, all those are applicable within the scope of that model. And then you have one controller implemented only for a particular, uh, only for some elements. Those elements are enclosed inside a div. And then wherever the scope of the div is applicable, this menu controller is also applicable. So first you have an app, so you have a module created, and then you create a controller. So your uh, your controller is uh, is named menu controller, and then the way you do it is app dot controller, and then within quotes you write the controller name, and then within that you can implement a function. So uh, a controller has a functionality now, and then it has properties. So when you write this, this implies that uh, this means that wherever the controller is applicable. The same scope comes to this. So when you write this dot dot tab equal to one, what it means is wherever the menu controller is there, tab property also holds true. So tab property, uh, the, this particular attribute called tab is accessible uh, is accessible where a menu controller is accessible. So you have so you define these properties. You uh, like tab, and then you uh, you set it as default by one. So what this is for is. These these uh, things that are the, the menu appetizers, mains, and desserts. These are the uh, tabs. Here. So you have tabs set default set by default as one, and then you have another attribute called fill text. So we'll see the use of this later. And now we, uh, the data that is used to render on the uh, the, the variable uh, object, the variable array that is created, is named as dishes. So all the objects that we see there, all the dishes that we see there. Are being rendered from this particular array. So in this array, we have the name defined, we have the image name defined, we have the category, you have the label, you have the price, description, and co comments. So you have this defined inside your controller, and then you have this dot dishes equal to dishes. So you have created a dishes JavaScript array. Now you need to associate that array to, the, to a variable called dishes. This variable dishes will hold the complete array, and then when you write this dot dishes. You're telling it that this dishes needs to be accessible as long as the menu controller scope is active. And then for uh, and then you write a uh, few functions that we'll see. So what you do here is you have uh, you have the list, the horizontal list that you have, the menu appetizers, desserts. So inside each you define these uh, like the menu appetizers, mains, and desserts. And then you have this thing called ng class equal to active. Menu control dot is selected one. So what it does is uh, ng class. This is a directive. So this directive uh, compiles this uh, compiles this in this way. So you have the active fallen and then a variable. So menu control dot is selected. Is selected is a function to which you pass a parameter one. So what happens here is it goes to menu control. So it goes to menu control dot is selected. So menu ctrl dot is selected. Because you 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 have used menu CTRL as a substitute for menu controller, it implies that it is menu controller dot is selected. So it automatically goes to the menu controller module. It goes to the menu controller controller, and then inside this controller, you have is selected function implemented. So you have this dot is selected at the bottom. You have this dot is selected equal to function check tab. So check tab is passed as a parameter. So the one that you have passed there passed there. Is automatically taken by check tab, so it is a parameter being passed to that function. So check tab takes the value one there, and then it returns this dot tab equal to equal to equal to check tab. So triple equal to JavaScript means uh, it it returns true or false. So if this dot tab is equal to check tab, it returns one. Else it returns zero. So uh, is is selected of one means suppose a selected tab value. So this dot tab. So if the tab value Has a value one. The check tab has a value one. This, if this dot tab also has a value one, then one becomes equal to one, and then it returns one. So what happens when you return one is inside menu ctrl dot is selected of one. You have one being returned if the tab value is one. So when you have one returned here, active colon one. So you you can have two values: active colon zero, active colon one. So ng class what it does is when you have one there. It applies the active class to this, or if it is zero, it does not. It, it does not apply the active class. So because it is one now, it it states that that particular li tag is active. 
So when you load the page, by default it is one. So you have set the tab value as one by default. So the selected tab is one, and that is why the menu is highlighted with a rectangular box on the bar. So the tab tab active now is menu. What happens when you click on the second tab? So the second tab is uh, the appetizer tab, where you have menu CTRL dot selected of two. So and then uh, yeah, I forgot to mention this. So you have this at uh, derivative called ng click equal to menu CTRL dot select one. So what happens when you do this is there is a link tab in which you have ng click derivative directive. So you uh, so it, uh, so it is it is also evaluated as a variable. So what happens here is you write menu control menu CTRL dot select one. So what it means is when you click on it, this function needs to be triggered. So the function that needs to be triggered is select of one menu CTRL dot select one. So it goes down, so it is into in the controller and then goes to the function called select. Now this dot select what it does is it takes the set tab as a as a parameter. So this set tab value gets the value one from the above and then it sets this dot tab equal to set tab. That means the tab is assigned a value one and then it tells you if this dot tab equal to two then this dot fill text equal to appetizer and then uh, then then if it is three it is means and then if it is four it is desert. So what happens now is when you click on the means the tab is assigned the value two one sorry because means is one you write on the you write in the means saying that ng click equal to select of one so select of one takes in one as a parameter and then it sets the tab value as one so this dot tab will be equal to one okay? and then it comes out and because the other conditionals are false it comes out of this and then you go to this uh, you have this statement ng class equal to active menu control dot is selected one so when this is evaluated there is a two way data binding so when this is evaluated is selected one it checks the value of tab if it is one it assigns the class one so what happens now is here when you click on appetizers the value passed is this dot select two so when you so you write there ng click equal to select of two so that is so two as per, two is passed as a parameter to the function select and then if it is two if it is two we have said that this dot fill text equal to appetizer now fill text gets the value appetizer and then uh, and then what happens here is yeah so fill text will take care of it later so fill text value set as two and then is dot selected is executed so it now it has to apply a class there. so when applying the class, when you click on this, the class active is removed from the first tab and applied to the second tab. So how that is done is you have this function called uh, this dot select tab of two. So select tab of two takes in two as a parameter, checks if the uh, tab value is two. So the tab value becomes two when you click on appetizers. So two matches with two, it returns two, and then the appetizers tab is selected. So th that is uh, similarly the main and dessert tab is selected. Based on what you write here. So you write here is selected three and is selected four. And then on clicking them, you write menu control dot select three, menu control dot select four. And then based on that, the tab and the tab value is assigned. And based on the tab value, that particular class is highlighted. It, it is mentioned as active. Now active here is a bootstrap class. So when you have a horizontal tab list, active tab gives you this this uh, format. So whenever a tab is active, it places a rectangular outline over that. So this is how ng click and ng control works. Now we'll see, uh, and now uh, we'll see how the list is displayed. And so the tab selecting part is over. Now based on that tab selecting, you have to filter the list below. So how you do that is you write the you write the li you you write, you write the list class. We can see here ng repeat dish in menu control dot dishes. So menu menu control dot dishes is a variable is a variable array. And then you write a uh, filter using the pipe, and then filter colon menu control dot fill text. So this is also evaluated the same way. Filter colon a variable. So if that variable is true, or, the, or that variable is assigned a value, the filter is applied based on that. Value. So let us let us see what happens now. So you have an ng repeat. It iterates over each dish inside the dishes array. So inside the dishes array, you have all these dishes, uh, and then it iterates over all these dishes. And displays all these information, and it displays this information by default. Now, what happens is, 
Yeah, you, you write an ng repeat. It, it iterates over all the objects in the array and then it displays the list. Now you have a filter here. So menu control dot fill text. So what, let's see what happens here. So menu control is the controller and then fill text is the function. Fill text is the uh, variable. So here we have initialized fill text as empty. And then when you click a tab, when you click a tab, the function is called, and then this dot fill text is set as appetizer. Okay. So this dot fill, so whenever a tab, that particular tab is selected, fill text gets the value gets the value of that tab. So when it is two, fill text gets the value of appetizer. If it is three, it gets the value of mains. If it is four, it gets the value of dessert. And now based on this value, fill text is assigned a value, and then this fill text. Is passed to the filter. Is passed to the filter function. So you have filter call and menu control dot filter text. So there you have the value appetizers or desserts. So based on that, you have menu control dot filter text. So you, uh, in the array, you have this category mains or appetizers. So it looks for the category and then it assigns the value. So uh, when you have the filter applied. It checks what uh, so that fi that fi uh, filter functionality that is there that automatically checks if the filter uh, criteria is satisfied. So when you click on appetizers, filter gets the value of appetizer, and then it again iterates over the loop of objects and then checks which objects are appetizers. So appetizers you have this one element and then you have the you have the two elements. So these two elements only are in are displayed which are appetizers. And then similarly for mains, it checks what uh, objects are, are having an attribute of mains or which are of the type of mains, and then it displays that particular attribute. But it displays that particular dish based on that attribute. So this is how a filter is implemented. So is, is it clear to everyone? Does it make sense? Can we move forward? So let us go to the next challenge. So here is the implementation of filters. It is a same, and then one more. Uh, there is one more. Uh, uh, one more demo of how filter works. So you have this this page called dish. So uh, for one particular dish, suppose you have comments available. So you have you take the first dish. Ah, and one, one more thing. Uh, you uh, here you have in great as you have dollar four dot ninety nine. Right. So there, what you do is when you iterate over the controller. So you have you have this. So now in this page you have dish detail controller. So you name it as PDC in short form so that you can access it everywhere. So in this Bootstrap classes, you mention you you assign these classes based on Bootstrap, and then you give it the value PDC dot dish dot name. So what it does is inside dish detail controller, you have only one object that has name, image, category, category, label, price, description, and comments. So PDC dot dish dot name. What it does is DDC is the controller, so it goes right to that controller and dishes the object that is dishes the variable that is there. So it accesses accesses the dish variable, and then inside dish you have the name attribute. So it accesses the name attribute. So here inside expression, if you write DDC dot dish dot name, that is displayed. So here you have dollar four to four point ninety nine. So in this the configuration is by default set as the USA currency. So you here when you have a filter uh, pipe currency. It automatically displays 4.99 after a dollar. So that is what happens when you use the currency filter. Similarly, you have the dish dot label display. You also have the description of the dish display. And now you have comments there. So comments is also a sub area. So dish is an area which has one element. So each element in dish has attributes like name, image, category, label, etc. And then comments is also an attribute. And then comments is also an array. Comments array has further attributes. Like uh, co comments array has other objects. So it has around five objects. Yeah, five objects. Each object, each object again has attributes like rating, comment, all that. So when you have to display comments, you again have to iterate inside the comments controller. You, you again have to iterate inside the comments array. So how you do that is. You have customer comments, and then you repeat inside this comment in ddc dot this dot comments. So ddc ddc dot this dot comments iterates over when you write it inside an ng repeat, it iterates over all the elements in the comments array. So this is the way the comments are displayed. And then you have a uh, you have an input box here. 
with the ng model sort criteria so as you have seen the demo of uh, how ng model works you have an ng model defined as sort criteria here an ng model and then it have, and then there is a filter so what happens and then you have when you repeat inside it you add a pipeline here saying order by sort criteria so a model called sort criteria is created and whenever there is a change in that value of that model that that is automatically reflected in this filter order by and then it uh, and then it uh, displays on displays the comments by order so order by is a custom angular filter uh, when you have a variable passed to order by based on that it will sort the comments so so, so now you have attributes like price you have attributes like uh, and uh, no, we have we have we are in control of comments array now so for comments you have reading author date so you have, so you have variables like this. you have attributes like this so these attributes can be assigned to the value of sort criteria so sort criteria can make can take input as author can have a can take input as a rating can take input as a date so whenever you have a value there value set there suppose you have author set as the value of ng model so that change is reflected in this filter here order by sort criteria sort criteria takes a value takes a variable name uh, author so you now you have to order by author so let so let us see how this works so you have a filter here and then you write it in order so suppose you write in a write in author here and you type an alphabet whenever it changes so a u t h o nothing happens and then when it gets sorted what happens is it is sorted by the author author is this 25 cent john lemon all these are authors so whenever you edit text an author it it goes to order by and then it knows that it has to sort it based on the author so it chronologically sorts the author so like this you can take the value of an author of a rating or of a date so suppose and then one more thing is order by the values that it takes in at as they it takes in at as a as input so when you have a variable there uh, suppose if it is preceded by a minus sign it understands that it, it is to be sorted in the descending order so author sorts it in the ascending order suppose you write it as minus author it will sort it in the reverse order of chronological so you have ultimate so you so you have ringo's diary first because it has, because it has a higher value so it is sorted based on the descending order of similarly you can sort it by date also so when you write it as date so based on the date december 2 2011 2012 it is sorted that way and then if it is a minus date it is also sorted in the order of descending order of date similarly you can have it as rating so based on the rating two stars three stars four stars it is sorted and then minus rating sorted in the descending order so is this fine to everyone so we move forward next comes the scope so like like we said you have a two way data pipeline so whenever there is a model that is given a value so you have a value satisfying the model whenever there is a change that change is automatically captured by the queue by whenever there is a change in the queue that is captured by the model and then the change in model is again reflected back in the queue so we have said that is the two way data pipeline so now the logic that runs behind the two way data writing is scope so for for every controller that you have so, so you have some functionalities in angular js that will initiate a scope so you have you have a few defined uh, functionalities default that initiate a scope we we'll see that so what, first we understand what is a scope the scope is an object that refers to the application model it is a glue between the view and the controller so like we said There's a change in the view. That view, that that change is registered by the scope. Again, renders it back to the view. So the controller can set properties on the scope. The view binds to the property set by the controller. Angular is responsible to keep the sync. So controller, a property set inside the controller that is reflected in the view. A view, uh, something changes in the view that is recorded by the controller. Scope takes care of it. So the way you do that is. Uh, let me see the ng model the expression that is evaluated so suppose you have a variable called car name so whenever you have a car name in initiated inside your angular controller it is uh, given it is assigned to this directive called dollar scope so dollar scope dot car name is assigned the value volvo so this volvo 
this, so there's a change in the controller here. So this change is reflected back in the view. So when you, when you evaluate the car name, it will get the value of one. So that so that uh, interface that you have, the uh, the free, the Angular JS framework manages that. Uh, it takes care that whenever there's an update at one point, it is reflected at the other point. Angular is still care. And then you have uh, one more important feature of Angular is it has an explicit support for forms and form validation. Uh, in HTML, you have form validation support up to some extent. For example, you you put a required tag beside an input element. So whenever that is empty and you click on submit, it it will ask you to fill in that element. So now Angular is completely taking over HTML. So Angular has implemented its own uh, methods to do the form validation. So these methods, so there are a few methods by which you can control forms, by which you can monitor forms, by which you can uh, see whenever a form value is uh, valid or not. So there are two ways to do that. Generally, how value, form validation is done is on is in two ways. When you get the values from the user, you send it to the server, server validates everything, sends it back, and then shows to the user what uh, what errors are there in the form. That is one way. Other way is you record the input values, and then you evaluate them using JavaScript on the client side itself. And then you tell the user back that these are the errors in your form. In your form. So uh, the second one is better because it saves you the bandwidth. Every time you go to the server, the uh, uh, you go to the server, process it in the server, and come back. So there's a delay there. So in, uh, so without using that, you can do. The, it is always better to do the validation on the client side itself because it is fast and it does not require any extra bandwidth. So for doing it in the client side, you do it using JavaScript. So using JavaScript, HTML, uh, Angular takes over HTML. So it has implemented its own methods for form validation. So, you, so the way you declare a form, a form element in Angular JS is you have a type, you have a book subclass is different. You give an ID, you give a name, you give a placeholder. In the end, you say that it is an ng model. You, you initiate it with an ng model. So ng model is equal to feedback dot first name. So feedback is the form name. So if you have the form tag, you say you say the ng model, you say the model as feedback. And then in the input element, you say the ng model is feedback dot first name. And then inside your logic, inside the script tags, you declare a controller. And then inside the controller, we have the scope directive there. So scope dot feedback. So that is the complete form. So the complete form will have attributes. So in, in that, one of the attributes is the first name, which is associated as a model to the input tag with the name first name. So you have scope dot feedback equal to my channel, first name, last name. Agree and email. So these are various fields in that form. In that one of the forms you are concerned with is first name. So feedback about first name is given to a model. And then uh, this model value is automatically input uh, is taken as a value to the scope dot feedback array. So let us see how this works in the code uh, in the code implementation. And then one more uh, feature of this form validation is uh, binding select. So Angular has its own way of uh, populating select element. Select element is basically the drop down element. So when you click on the drop down, you have uh, a list of options available there. So the way you populate that is you have a select tag in HTML and then uh, you have option tag open. So option, the value option, value option, value. you have defined it that way. Now Angular has its own way of doing it. So first what you do is you, say, you create the array called channels. That has uh, that has attributes like so. What happens is each element of an array is an element of the drop-down. So you have here two two elements. So the first element has so each element has two attributes. So the first element has the value T E L and the label capital T E L. Two attributes. So label is what is displayed and value is what is what what the value of the uh, particular element in the drop-down. Like suppose you have, suppose you have a drop down of uh, countries. So uh, when you have the drop down, uh, you order it in the chronological order. So suppose some country with A comes. You what you do generally is you don't take the country in and you assign it a value, say one. So one is assigned to this country, two is assigned to this country. So whenever that is clicked, its value is recorded. So value one corresponds to this country, two corresponds to that country. What you store in the database is the value. 
and then you retrieve it back also. You say you write a condition saying if it is if the value is one, it is this condition. Value is two, it is this condition. So uh, for a uh, Angular select element, you have to have two attributes, value and label. Label is what is shown in the uh, form, and then value is its corresponding value. So you have two elements here. First element is telephone with capital T E L dot, and then the value is T E L. Okay, and then you have the second element. Its label it is displayed as E M A I L email, and then its value is also E M A I L email. To populate this is uh, you define the select tag and then ng model equal to feedback dot my channel and then you have ng options so ng options is again a directive that will be used to uh, populate the select tag so ng options channel dot value as channel dot label for channel in channels okay so our channel in channels what it does is it iterates over the channel array channel array and then each and then each element is taken as channel And then channel dot value as channel dot label. Here you are using a substitution here. So channel dot value is the actual value, and then it will be displayed as channel dot label. Okay. So channel dot label is what the user sees. Value is the corresponding value that it has, and then uh, that is displayed after iterating over the channels array. So ng options will act like, will act like a loop again because you have uh, for channel and channels you have for loop there. So it iterates over the channels array. And then it gets each of the uh, each each element's value and label, puts the value, puts the label in the front end, takes the value in the back. And then you have option value equal to something, and then tell you T L or E M. So this is what is the, uh, the default value. I mean, when you have a when you have a list of top down having list of countries, so you have there now uh, select your country. So that so that select your country. Is this part T E L or E M? You want to select a telephone or E M? And then uh, when you click on that, you have a drop down that has all the options. So all those options are uh, elements of the channel array. So this is about the binding array. And then how form validation is done. So this is validating individual elements. And then overall, how do you validate the form? Is Angular takes over the responsibility for validation. So for Angular to identify a form, form needs to have a form name. And then you have a directive called ng submit that specifies the function to call. So just like uh, in the previous demo, we had ng click equal to some function. That function was triggered whenever the ng click uh, that element is clicked. So you have ng submit now. When you click on the submit button with an ng submit uh, directive attached, the function that is there inside the ng submit expression is evaluated. So you have the form. So you give the name to a form because Angular has identified. And then you give the ng submit equal to the function, equal to function. So this function is triggered whenever submit is clicked. And then you give it as no validate. No validate specifies that HTML need not validate it. Angular will take care of it. So this keyword will specify that HTML doesn't need to validate. And then Angular also has directives for form evaluation. We have seen uh, directives like uh, ng bind, uh, and then uh, we have seen directives like ng, uh, in the previous thing we have seen this ng options directive. We are specific for uh, form validation. Like that, it has ng min length, ng max length, ng pattern. So where is the usefulness? Suppose uh, you have uh, a phone number, or maybe time of the day. Time of the day can vary from zero to twenty-four. It cannot have value more than that. So you get, so you give minimum uh, minimum ng min value equal to zero, max value equal to twenty-four. It accepts only those values between zero and twenty. And then suppose you have a password. Password can be suppose you have a password. You you should have a password that has at least eight characters in it. So you give ng min length equal to eight. It will validate. It will check if the value has if the length of the password is eight. Only then it will take it. Otherwise it will it will not submit the form. So it so it should not submit the form. The way you take care that take care of that is yes. now your your. Uh, Angular JS has few properties that are specifically used for uh, form validation. So the way you use it is feedback form dot first name dot pristine. So you have these values pristine, dirty, valid, and invalid. So pristine says true if form has not been changed. So if the form hasn't been touched at all by the user, then dollar pristine is set to true, and then dollar dirty is set to true if the user has edited the form. 
so this is uh, so this comes in handy when you have case like uh, user updates is by so uh, the, you have you have the user uh, details already stored on the database so you already stored in the database so you whenever user has to update his details you have a form shown in which you have the input elements already present the same input elements inside each input element you have the values already shown shown there whatever they are there in the database so i want to update it as other so suppose so what is stored in the database is already other other will be displayed there i just click on that and then add the remaining characters there. so what happens here is suppose a user clicks on uh, suppose you don't use these properties the user clicks on update so what you do is you, you have a dilemma there whether you need to update these values in the database or not so what you do is you retrieve the rate, you have the values from the database again you submit the form you take it you check each input value you compare it with the database values if it is same then you don't update it if it is different then you again store it so so instead of doing all this you have this variable called dollar list so the way you use it is feedback form dot dollar list in so, so suppose you use it in feedback form dot dollar list so you check so whenever user is clicking on submit we just check if feedback form dot dollar list in is true or false that means that the user has edited the form that means the user has changed it has changed the form the you, you need to store the updated values in the data and then you have values like valid and invalid so for each input value you do the validation and then uh, dollar valid and dollar invalid what these do is if all the values in the form are valid then the dollar value is set to true and then if it, it is uh, and then if dollar invalid is set to true if any, if at least one of the values in the input form is invalid so what uh, it is like when you suppose you have a submit button and it is by default disabled it needs to be enabled the user should be able to click it only if all the values in the form are valid so for that what you do normally if you don't use this properties to take all the input, you will have to anyway enable the submit button and then when you take in all the values and then you check if they are valid and only then proceed to uh, taking in the information from the form if you have dollar valid there so dollar value feedback form dot dollar valid if all the things in the form are valid, and then you can enable that submit button otherwise you can leave it as disabled so, so the user will not be able to submit the form unless all the things are and then a few properties in css so if you are familiar with bootstrap bootstrap has these properties like has these classes like has error has warning has success help block so suppose the user has uh, you know has specified his email id as wrong i mean there's no at the rate or there's no dot in the email id then it is false then it is invalid so it is given the class false so that uh, so you have this ng class directive that will apply a class or a variable is true so you, so the variable that you use here is dollar valid so if dollar valid is true that means on the form if dollar if dollar invalid is true that means the form has some errors so wherever there is an error you check the dollar invalid element if it is one that means it is invalid so you enable the class has error so an example of this will see in the unit so here is okay so this is one of the pages of our uh, confusion app again so this is for the feedback so you have the form here on one side and then you have the feedback auto it is like i will show you whatever is your current status so there is an ng module attached to each of them so as soon as you update this your current feedback on the right is also updated yes. We have uh, the form here. So whenever my form, my first name is updated here, the first name is automatically changed here, and then the last name. So that is also updated here, and then the area code. So first name and last name need not have any restrictions on your number of characters, or these characters need not be there, or these characters should be there. Don't have any such restrictions. So any, so unless it is empty, all other values are valid. So suppose I leave it as empty. So this class is has error class. So this cannot be empty. So you specify inside that this should not be empty. So whenever it is empty, the dollar invalid will be set to true. Invalid is set to true. 
the bootstrap has has error is activated and then whenever that is active this link this is displayed your app is your your name is your first name is required to display so how that is done is we'll see in the code so if you enter all these values so uh, observe that right now the send feedback button is disabled you cannot click it unless all these values are entered now you have the area so suppose i enter something and then one of those enter something and then email so when it comes to email is it alphabet by alphabet it keeps track of whether your email id till now is valid or not so suppose i enter this yes so it will tell you that the enter a valid email address and then suppose i put at the rate so this is also not invalid and then put a id number is so i put a name it is now valid is the is the at the rate a is valid according to the validation that we have done so we are assuming something at the rate something is a valid email address but then when you put a dot again we assume it as uh, uh, something dot, dot ending with a dot is not a valid email address so uh, these, these things that you uh, keep track of and you uh, when you say that it should have at least eight characters and then when you say uh, things that things like when you say it should not start with a capital letter it should not end with a dot it should not end with a special character these things how you take care of is you have uh, this angle you have this directive called ng pattern so it is for the pattern uh, matching uh, uh, the expression uh, matching so in that you specify you can specify this uh, i mean there are few special symbols called star and then you have special symbols so yeah, dot we have these special symbols with the help of these special symbols we'll not get into details of that so with that you can specify you can have any number of uh, characters followed by a dot you can have any number of So it will, it will show you that you can have any number of characters followed by a dot, but should not end with a special character. So you things like that. So using ng pattern, you can test these things. And then dot com. If I do it, then it is valid. So then it it again comes back to normal. And then you have this check box. So maybe contact you. So when you click this, here here is where the Angular this thing, uh, Angular uh, form uh, select uh, binding takes place. So as we saw in the Uh, code there, tl dot email was the uh, was the value that needs to be uh, displayed as default value. And then what is displayed here is it iterates in the it iterates into the uh, into the array elements. And then each element first element is a tl, and then the second element is an email. So the labels are displayed here, and the value is hidden from the user. So user selects one. And then it is automatically updated here. Contacted, contact by telephone or contact by email. So the value there is shown here. So the, the value for T L dot is T L. So T L is shown here. And then for email, the value is same as email. So email is shown. And then now you enter the feedback. So you enter something. And then still the same feedback is not valid because the first name is invalid. And now you enter some valid first name. This becomes active. And then when you press it, the form validation you can take care of it. Take care of it in the server. So let us quickly go through all the code things. Yes. So here you have the form. So you have the form here. So inside this you have the name for each input element defined. And then uh, if you if you see here. It has ng class equal to has error feedback dot first name dot error dot required and feedback dot first name dot pristine. So what this says is ng class applies the class has error if these things are valid. So there's an expression inside. So dollar error says that there's an error and then feed, not of feedback form of dot first name dot pristine. That means the user has touched the form and then it is an error. Only then it needs to apply the has error class. So that was what happened when we left the first name as empty. The has error class was displayed, and then inside this you have you have it here. Ng span ng show. Ng show is another directive. What ng show does is whenever the expression inside ng show is true, it shows whatever the value of the text inside the device. So inside span you have this text. Your first name is required. So this this text is displayed. Only when the expression inside the ng show is evaluated to true. So first name dot error is true. That means it has been left as empty. So it is true. And then feedback dot first name dot dollar pristine. 
That means I have once touched it and then deleted everything. Only then the error came. So that means I have touched the form and I have given an invalid input. That means it has to show the error class. Similarly, the validation is done for all the classes. So it is displayed here, email load is valid and then the checkbox. And then as we saw in the code, channel load value as channel load label for channel and channels. So title it some of the over each operator, over each variable inside the array, and then it takes the value, displays the variable. So that is done there. And then coming to the submit button. So ng disabled equal to feedback form dot invalid. So as we saw, if the if dollar invalid is we saw if any one of the if at least one of the elements in the form is invalid, then dollar invalid is set to true. Then feedback dot feedback dot dollar invalid is set to true. And then whenever it is set to true, then ng disabled is true. So if ng disabled is true, it in, it uh, disables the form button. So that is taken out, taken care of by uh, disabling, disabling is taken care of by bootstrap. So you have ng disabled element. And then whenever the, all the elements in the form are valid, then dollar invalid is set to false. Then ng disabled is set to false. The button is active. This is how it works. Uh, we'll have a 15 minutes break. Before that, uh, uh, we have Maher here. He's the project coordinator for Kerala Stellar's Code Good. Um, yeah, Code Good, right? Okay, yeah, Code Good. So uh, he'll be telling about Kerala Stellar's just two minutes. Thank you. 